Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Wednesday, August 25th. This is your daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The Minnesota game is in eight days. The game against Michigan in 94 days. Later on today, we will have our final preseason position group interviews. Those will be with the wide receivers. Earlier in the week, we got a chance to talk to the safeties as well as head coach Ryan Day and assistant coach Matt Barnes. One thing that has happened after a lot of those interview sessions is that we've done Morning Scoop shows featuring clips from those interviews. And the feedback in those has been like incredible. It turns out you guys like hearing directly from the players and coaches in addition to our normal rotation of guests. So we're going to do another one of those shows today. We're here to give you whatever you want. So here's what you want. Uh, Let's start with head coach Ryan Day. It was safety day. So Day got asked about the plans for the back end of the defense in the fall. Are they planning to stay with the one high look that they preferred over the past few years? You'll also hear him discussing the return of Marcus Hooker to the team following a suspension earlier in the year. And also where things stand with the depth in that defensive backfield. Yeah, when we're not changing, um, there's a lot of things that we've done in the past that we're very proud of, and then there's some things that we had to fix coming off of last year. So, you know, philosophically, we're not going to change. We just had to clean some things up. And Marcus Hooker's back. Uh, who talked about that decision and how he's looked so far? Yeah, I mean, he obviously made a really bad mistake. Um, I think when you recruit young men and uh, their families, and you say that you know you're going to bring them in and take care of them. Then when they go through tough times, you have to work through that. Now, he understands that he's in a no tolerance policy moving forward, but um, you know he he obviously went through everything he needed to go through to to pay his penance in that area. He, he obviously understands what he's done, and you know we've given him this opportunity to prove to everybody that um, that he can move forward and, and change somebody else's life after what he went through. And I think that's a big part of coaching football is is giving these guys an opportunity to learn and grow. Um, but certainly he, you know, is in a no tolerance policy moving forward. Over here to the right, Dan. Ryan, it seems like, you know, a lot of DBs were in and out of practice during camp. Do you feel like you have a good feel for what you have in that secondary right now, or are you still kind of working through that? Uh, both. I think that the way that some guys have practiced really gives us some confidence going into that first game that there's more depth than we've had in a long time here. Um, still trying to figure out exactly who is game ready. You know, but uh, but we, we have a good group of guys, and I think we're much further along than we've been uh, in the last couple of years in terms of our depth back there. These interview sessions always bounce around through a bunch of very different topics because there's like 40 reporters there, and they're all planning on writing different stories. So you will hear Day in this next clip start by up to, uh, discussing the updated COVID protocols from the season, and then he'll also provide some updates on the linebackers, including the status of transfer linebacker Holaye Naoteote. Yep, the guys who are uh, unvaccinated um, are required to test twice a week through the university. Uh, for the guys who are vaccinated, uh, they do not need to test uh, during the week. Uh, front row there, Tim. Yeah, can you delineate how many are not vaccinated on this team at this point? Is there a number? Yeah, it, you know, it kind of some guys uh, jump on um, you know daily, but I, I think we're right around ten or maybe just under ten now. Yeah. The guys that are unvaccinated. Can you give me a fair? Can you name? Can you give me at least one linebacker you know is going to play, is going to be on the field, starting lineup wise when you guys play in Minnesota? Uh, Taraja Mitchell is a captain for us. I mean, he'll be on the field in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but, but you know, the majority of those guys are going to play. So it, it'll be, um, you know, it'll be something that we're going to continue to, to kind of work through the depth of it all. But uh, he's one guy you'll see for sure. Does that include Nao Teote? Uh, we'll see. We're still waiting to see uh, from the NCAA, you know, which we have classes starting tomorrow. So we're kind of holding off on that because we don't want to put him in a bad spot. But I'm um, just waiting to hear. Hopefully, you know, we're obviously, obviously optimistic. But as we're getting ready for Minnesota, classes are starting tomorrow. We're, we're hoping to hear something. He's been through a lot, and uh, we're hoping he, he gets that waiver. Matt Barnes, who coaches the secondary, was not at all willing to talk about anything related to who might be starting or depth charts or anything along those lines. Uh, he was, though, asked about the safety position that has been responsible for covering the slot receiver. Like, what do they actually call that position internally? Uh, cover safety. Okay. When we see, if Lathan, tell me if I'm wrong on these. If Lathan Ransom seems like a guy who works in there, Marcus Williamson, Cam Martinez, are, do, are they viewed all the same, or do they do any sort of different things when they're on the field? That's a great question. We, we are, uh, we're very concept and technique oriented. So we teach the whole, so I, I can play a corner in the slot. I can play a, a traditional safety in the slot. Um, so yes, sometimes those guys that you mentioned go cover in the slot and, and sometimes those guys play in the post and sometimes those guys play a third and sometimes they play, you know, you know, different things. So, uh, 
again, we're concept and, and technique oriented, so we're less concerned with, um, you know, which, which Jimmy and Joe is there right now. It's more, you know, we're kind of more X's and O's right now. It's kind of this concept at this time. Hey, why don't we get so-and-so some reps there? We've seen what it looks like from last year and uh, in the COVID area and with injuries, um, you know, guys have to be, to be flexible and play different positions. So to say that we're going to lock a guy in, we're going to pigeonhole somebody into a certain position at this point, we're really not ready to do that. I'm, I'm just making sure we don't sound stupid when we're talking about your defense. Because it's like, yeah, Cover like it's, and, yeah. and I mean, when you look at someone again, like Lathan Ransom as a football player versus Cam Martinez as a football player, they can do similar things, but they also seem to have different skill sets, mm -hmm. but they might be lined up in the same place on the field, but it might be matchup wise, the team you're 100%. playing, the player yeah, in the slot, they're the doing head. different things. 100%, yeah. Well, despite the fact that Barnes was not really willing to talk about any kind of depth droughts or any kind of anything like that, we can kind of let you know what it seems like the plan is for the back end of that defense based on what we've seen in practice, kind of what we've heard from different people. It sounds like the deep safeties are likely to be Josh Proctor and then Marcus Hooker and Bryson Shaw in some order there. Cover safeties, Lathan Ransom, Marcus Williamson, Cam Martinez, and the bullets will be Craig Young, Ronnie Hickman, and Court Williams. There may be some shuffling there at some point, but that's sort of where it sounds like things stand right now in the back end of the Ohio State defense. Ransom was a really big surprise for the Buckeyes last year, not only because he showed up in the summer and then turned into a significant contributor in the fall, but also because they were expecting him to be a high safety when he came in. That's the spot where guys like Malik Hooker and Jordan Fuller used to play. Now he's turned into a cover safety instead. Here's Barnes talking about that and how sometimes when you're recruiting a guy, he doesn't always end up playing in that spot that you're expecting him to. Yeah, you know, if you went, if you watched, uh, if you watched Lincoln's high school film, he was more a uh, uh, deep player, a deep, deep field oriented, uh, middle field safety and, and those types of things. He ended up being a, a much better cover player than we anticipated. And if you go back and watch, uh, now I would expect to see Lathan all over the field this year, but um, if you go back to the Clemson game, you know, you saw him mostly covering in the slot, and that was something that we were not necessarily anticipating him, him doing at such a high level. So basically you expected him to be more of a high safety, but he's become a cover safety. It, again, that's one of the it's one thing that we didn't anticipate him doing that well that he does very well. Um, but I would expect to see him all over the field. Last year it seemed like you knew who your main experienced guys were, but there was a lot of question about the depth, mostly because of you know COVID being unable to coach up those younger guys. This year, the, the impression we get from Ryan is you guys feel good about the depth. There's a lot of guys in the mix, but maybe there's not much certainty at the top. Is that accurate? Are you still you have more guys in the pool to play, but you're not sure who's going to be? Or well, I think uh, we've got at every position we've got multiple guys um, that we feel really good about. So. You know, it's a long season. It's a physical season. Um, the nature of, of college football has changed, you know, in the course of the last 10 or more years where what, you know, where 60 plays used to be a lot of plays. Now 90 plays is a lot of plays. So you're really playing a, a game and a third. Um, and over the course of a season, as you know, you, you play 12 games and then hopefully a conference championship game. And then who knows from there, you know, there, there are plenty of reps that go around. Um, so yeah, I think uh, we, we have we have a lot of guys that we feel confident uh, in, in, at different positions, at multiple positions. We feel like we've got a lot of guys that we feel have a great deal of confidence in, uh, and that will afford us to play a variety of players. So that's Barnes talking about Ransom. Now here's a little bit from Ransom himself talking about what it was like having to change his role from what he did in high school to now in college. You never know, so just try to learn. Uh, I try to tell the young guys just try to learn, know every position, because you never know when your number's going to get called. And uh, that's really what our, all our coaches preach here is just competitive excellence. Uh, when your number is called, you just go in there and just it doesn't change from the starters to the next guy up. How often were you actually at the line of scrimmage in high school? Um, a lot of times we had a, a unique scheme. So there was sometimes they tried to blitz me. Um, a lot of times in the box when we faced a, a really uh, strong running team. And then uh, when we played a passing team, I'd go back there, free safety. How do you think the cover safety position fits your game? Um, uh, it keeps me uh, in the box. Uh, I get to co cover slot receivers, uh, a lot of fast guys, and then basically, yeah, it just keeps me in the box, keeps me closer to the game. So, what do you think of the things you do well that makes you a good fit for that spot? Um, just able to, to come in and uh, fill if I need to fill a hole or make a tackle uh, on a running back, and then also just have the ability to just play against uh, any receiver. Did you surprise yourself last season with your ability to step in in the summer and make an impact the way you did? Uh, I think this, the coaching staff really helped me to where 
practice was so hard facing the best receivers every day, the best quarterbacks every day, to where um, when I came into the games, it was it was not a big uh, stepping stool. Last year, you, know, you did step in, and you could tell, even from an experienced guy, you just have instincts. Is that always something? Is that something you've always had, just a feel for the game? Uh, I would say I, I do. I do have a pretty good feel for the game, but also just uh, coaching staff really helped me. Um, they taught me how to watch film, and that's where something I'm still growing at as a player, and uh, that really helped me just play faster. Ryan Dave has brought up your name a lot this offseason as a guy who's impressed him. What do you think you've been able to do to impress him? Just I'm just a hard worker. Um, that's really something I, I pride myself on, just a guy that's just going to go in and just uh, grind every day. And then um, – my teammates have really helped me just to push me every day, uh, just going against receivers. Uh, the other DBs in the room has just pushed me to, to be the best uh, player I can be. This is the third year that the bullet position has been a part of the Ohio State defensive scheme, but it might just be the first time that actually really shows up on the field. That position is something of a hybrid between a linebacker and a safety. It's kind of a response to modern football and the spread growth of the spread offense and teams put more wide receivers and fast guys out on the field. You're not seeing as many old Wisconsin uh, I formation teams as you used to. So the defense is adapting to that. Uh, Craig Young is one of the guys expected to play a lot at the uh, bullet position this fall. He talked about that position and then how his skills kind of fit into his role there. I'm at, I'm fast. You know, Ohio State, we have fast people. We have fast players. Um, I'm very versatile. I can fit in the box. I can guard. I can go back in deep thirds. Um, I can do pretty much anything that a 5'9 player would can do, and I'm just 6'4", so I just say, like, just being fast and just being physical in the box, so that's what makes me. 6'4"? Yeah, 6'4". Because Ronnie, one of the first things Ronnie said was, people don't know how fast you are. You are. So that's, yeah, they 6'4 don't, dude who's super fast is pretty good. Yeah, huh? they don't know how, yeah, they don't really know how fast I am. They got the times messed up on Google <laughs> and Twitter and stuff, but, yeah, I know, I know the real time. <laughs> so how, how, how do you feel when you're on the field now in this position? I don't know. There's not a, you know, this is this is big, this is big time college football, but there's still not a not a ton of six four guys with great right. speed uh, floating around out there. How I feel, uh, actually, I just uh, I just play the game how it's, how it's played, actually. So uh, I just be detailed, uh, keyed into my uh, my player who I'm playing. Uh, I just be like really detailed and really disciplined and everything. I I use it as an advantage, to speed. The scale, my link, I use everything as an advantage, of course, but um, really it's just being disciplined and detailed because, like, you can have all the speeds you want, you can have all the things you want, but you get, if you ain't disciplined, then it's not going to work, so, yeah. Craig, so, I remember when, when you were here camping before you got your offer, mm -hmm. however many years ago that was, they yeah. basically worked you out everywhere but offensive line. Right. Um, <laughs> Do you always envision kind of this role for yourself where you're sort of multi-positional and able to, to use your versatility? Um, for sure. I always uh, thought that I was going to be like one of them athletes that, that play different positions in college and everything. Uh, and it start it didn't start to about this year, and and I'm, and I'm really liking it, actually. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it. It's me. It's what I did in high school. Um, I feel very comfortable with it. I feel, and, and I'm moving very, and I'm moving very comfortable with it. I'm more confident. I'm more confident in this position where I'm at now. Well, again, I do hope you guys enjoyed that show. Every time we do one of these, the feedback on our Twitter and YouTube comments is always just incredibly positive. So we'll keep, if you guys keep liking them, we will keep doing these shows. We get to uh, talk to players. We'll talk to the wide receivers on Wednesdays. We'll probably do another one of these shows at some point later this week. And then next week is game week. So we'll have uh, player interviews, I think, on Monday. So we'll have probably a show, something along these lines at some point before the game on Thursday and uh, continue that throughout the uh, throughout the season. So thank you guys for your feedback. We really do appreciate it because we're, we're here for you. We're here to give you what you want. And if you tell us what you want, we can do that. So do appreciate your feedback there. Uh, do make sure you also check out BuckeyeScoop.com. We have a fantastic team of insiders, great insight analysis, coverage. We have incredible stuff planned for this fall, and the uh, only place you can get it is at BuckeyeScoop.com. So sign up to get a become a member. Also, we have a uh, world premiere of our documentary, Fight for Football, Saving the 2020 Season, coming up next Monday in Columbus. We sold out the initial theater that we had planned, so we have bumped it up to a bigger theater. We are still at the Lenox Theater next, uh, next Monday at 7 o'clock. But uh, we now have more tickets available than we thought we would. So you can uh, we have now opened that up to the public. Buckeye Scoop members had first crack at it and filled the theater and then some. So we have 
spread it out to a bigger theater. And now you can, uh, the public has access to the tickets as well. If you just go to the front page of BuckeyeScoop.com in the post for this podcast, I will have the link to buy tickets. So you can uh, get those there and uh, make sure you be, be there for it, which should be a fantastic night. I've uh, seen the film. It is a fantastic, really, really good film. A lot of very, very, imp- you know, great, great folks in there telling a really interesting story, stuff you have, absolutely have not heard before. Great stuff. Um, and then after the film is over, we'll have a live Q&A with a bunch of Buckeye Scoop staffers and more. So that'll be a great, great night. So do check, get your tickets right now before they, uh, eventually we will run out of space, even in the bigger theater. So get your tickets now so you don't miss out on that. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.